Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting equation. We have z to the fourth power equals z bar which is the complex conjugate of z. We've done a similar problem before with the second power and we're going to be doing some higher powers later but this fourth power is actually pretty interesting. And I'll be presenting two methods as well as show you the results from Wolfram Alpha. So we can compare our findings to those. So we have a complex number z whose fourth power equals its complex conjugate. Is that possible at all? So two scenarios. z could be real and z could be non-real. If z is real then we're good because solution would be fairly easy. So let's go ahead and take a look at that case because that's kind of like a trivial case. So suppose z is real. If z is real, z can be written as a plus bi, right? But b is going to be 0. So we're not going to have an imaginary part. We can basically call that a. So we're going to get a to the fourth power equals a bar. But a bar is basically or z bar. I should probably just stick with z because that makes more sense. So we're going to get z to the fourth power equals z bar. But z is a real number. Therefore, its conjugate is also going to be the same thing as z. Make sense? Great. So we got an awesome equation. z to the fourth equals z. And we can actually solve it. And we know that z is real now. So it's going to be hopefully easier. How do you solve such equations? Z divide by z? Uh-oh. Never do that. Always put everything on the same side and set the whole thing equal to zero. That's the safest way to solve equations. Okay? Now, we can factor this, can't we? Take out a z, and then we're going to get z cubed minus 1 equals 0. From here, we get two branches. Either z is 0 or z cubed is equal to 1. Wait a minute. Are we talking about cube roots of 1, like complex roots of unity? No, no, no. Remember, z is not complex because, well, it is, but z is real. So we're not really looking at cube roots of 1, but just the cube root of 1, which is 1. So from here, you get two solutions. z is 0 or z is 1. So these are the uninteresting questions, but let's get them out of the way. Now, second scenario. What happens if z is not real? Then... The interesting part starts. Ta-da. Okay. Let the fun begin. Now, if z is not real, we can go ahead and replace it with a plus bi, but this time b does not equal 0. Okay? So we have z to the fourth equals z bar. Replace z with a plus bi. Raise it to the fourth power, and then set it equal to a minus bi. Isn't that interesting? Like, how could you have a complex number raised to the fourth power, which is equal to, is conjugate? Well, that happens. That's life, right? Now, how do you solve for C? Here's what you can do. You have to solve for A and B. So let's use the binomial theorem. This is going to give us A to the fourth plus 4A cubed BI plus 6A squared BI squared plus 4A squared bi cubed plus bi to the fourth power. We just use the binomial theorem, nothing special, but we got to simplify this. Well, first of all, a to the fourth for a cubed bi is just going to stay the same. And now bi quantity squared. That's going to be b squared i squared, which is negative b squared. It's going to be negative 6a cubed b squared. Notice that this is going to be real. And bi cubed b cubed i cubed, that's going to be negative b cubed i. So negative 4a squared b cubed i. And finally, i to the fourth is 1. So this is going to give me b to the fourth. Make sense? And this is equal to a minus bi. How simple, right? Now let's see what happens with this. We're going to put the real parts together. a to the fourth minus 6a cubed b squared plus b to the fourth. That's the real part. And the imaginary part is 4a cubed b minus 4a squared b cubed i. Okay, we got to be very careful here. Uh, hopefully, we did not make any mistakes. 
because I think this is supposed to be an A. I'm like, the powers are supposed to go down. Yes, I'm sorry. It's supposed to be um, for A, not for A squared, because the powers of A is supposed to go down, and this is actually supposed to be a second power. So let's fix those, and let's see. Maybe this one is going to be a square. And now what else do I have? And that's going to be a square. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, I think it's fixed, and now this is equal to A minus BI. Great. Now, the real part needs to equal real part, which is A. The imaginary part, and by the way, I have to put that in parentheses. And of course, uh, I fixed this, so it should be 4A cubed BI minus 4A B cubed. So this is supposed to be an A, not A squared. Okay? Awesome. Now, here's what we have, and this is supposed to equal negative B. So we got the following system of equations. A to the fourth minus 6A squared B squared plus B to the fourth equals A. And we can actually negate both sides if you want and write this as 4AB cubed minus 4A cubed B is equal to the opposite of negative B, which is positive B. I just negated to get a positive on the right-hand side, okay? Now, this is a nice system. You know why? Because this is somewhat homogeneous, right? So here's what we can do. We can replace B with AK, where K is kind of like a different variable. We introduce a new variable and then plug it in, divide both sides, so on and so forth. But guess what? That's going to be very painful. Trust me, you're going to have to deal with some quartic equations. It's just going to be crazy. But guess what? There's going to be a solution at the end. Hopefully, that exercise is left for you and you can handle that. Okay, let's go ahead and look at second method without further ado, because the first method was painful enough, right? Okay, here's the second approach. We have z to the fourth equals z bar. Now, notice that Whenever you see z bar, aren't you like tempted to multiply it by z because z times z bar is real. Remember that? We've done that all the time. Like whenever you're uh, dividing by a complex number, you have to get rid of the i at the bottom. So you multiply by what? The complex conjugate. So z and z bar get together a lot. Very helpful, very helpful So uh, method. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by z then. If we multiply both sides by z, on the left-hand side, we're going to get z times z to the fourth, which is z to the fifth power. And on the right-hand side, we're just going to get the absolute value of z squared, right? Because the absolute value of z is the square root of a squared plus b squared, and this is just a squared plus b squared. Make sense? Okay, great. So how does this help? Well, here's what we can do. We can go ahead and take a look at the absolute values. But this just tells us if you absolute value both sides, the absolute value of z to the fifth is going to be the same thing as absolute value of absolute value of z squared, which is obviously uh, the same thing as this. And then you're going to get absolute value of z is 0 or absolute value of z is 1. Why can't we use 0? Well, z equals 0 is already a solution. We don't have to worry about it because if the absolute value of 0 is 0, this automatically implies z is 0. We already got that. We're looking for non-real solutions. So we got that absolute value of z is equal to 1. And how do we solve this problem under those conditions? Let's take a look. Okay, so we have z to the fourth equals z bar, right? So here's what I can do. I can actually replace z with the following. Since the absolute value of z is 1, I can write it as e to the power i theta. I, I could have used an r, but r is 1 because absolute value of z is the same as r. So I can write z that way, and this is going to give me e to the power 4i theta, and that's going to equal e to the power negative i theta. Notice that that's the conjugate. But if you multiply both sides by z, guess what you're going to get? 1 for the absolute value. So e to the power 5i theta equals 1. And then now I can write the 1 as e to the power 2 pi and i. And by setting these equal to each other, I'm able to find theta and hopefully go to other things from here. Make sense? Okay. If you set 2 pi and i equal to 5i theta, the i is going to cancel out. We're going to end up with 
and 2 pi n, so I can probably solve for theta, 2 pi n divided by 5. So if n is equal to 0, theta is going to be 0. If n is equal to 1, theta is going to be 2 pi over 5, and then 4 pi over 5, so on and so forth. So what is pi over 5? It's 36 degrees. This is 70 degrees, right? In degrees, that's 72 degrees, not 70. So these are somewhat special angles, and I should remind you the regular pentagon. And here's the results. Real solutions, 0 and 1. You already knew that. But here's the more interesting part. The square root of 5 comes from the 2 pi over 5 to 4 pi over 5 and so on and so forth. These are going to be the complex solutions to our equation. How many solutions are there in total? Not 5, but 6. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.